Hello, hi guys. In this lecture, we will, we will deploy our cluster through the same fancy ball and we will use a playbook console C ball for the deployment. But before we go ahead, I will first uh, explain the commands that we will have to launch and uh, for deploy successfully our cluster. And uh, another thing that we have to know is that this deployment will be a bare metal installation or non containerizer installation. It's this one that will be uh, done, done uh, that I will do right now. Go through this command, which is uh, the ncvol dash playbook dash safe user, okay, and uh, site, which will be the playbook and CVO that you will use, and uh, the inventory file, okay. But before I go ahead, let me just uh, explain you the, 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 the architecture that you will have to deploy, okay, before I go ahead. You will have uh, this node, this, uh, let me open the, open again, the inventory file. Okay, so we have uh, one monitor, okay, one MDS and one RGW node. And also uh, the manager daemon will be uh, stored on the monitor. And we will have also OSD nodes. This was the node you will have the different OSD daemon. So for this particular OSD node, let's go within this OSD node and you will see the configurations that we have within this uh, node. Okay, so let's go there. We go uh, on this node. Let's go on the first node OSD, for instance. By default, I have all these drives, which are there. Those drives will be configured after the installation of those drives will be configured. Okay. And regarding the networks, on this, on those, uh, on the OSD node, I have uh, two networks, two types of network, the cluster network and uh, the, uh, the public network. As you can see there, okay, I have uh, this network will be the, my, uh, Cluster network, the network that the OSD node, will, the OSD daemon will use for rebalancing and data replications. So this node, that what will be used for that. Let me dash dash. Uh, I will show you the architecture. Here, it is this node. This. Uh, yes, increase. Uh, yeah, this network, okay, this network on which all the OSD nodes have been connected will, will be used for the OSD daemon to replicate data within the cluster, okay? And when I go back to the look at here on the monitor, the monitor will be connected only on the public network only, okay? It will not have to be connector, connected on the cluster network. Let me show you. I will just go back. I will just go back here. On my node, winter node, I have only one network, okay, on which of my node is connected right now. Great. So let's go ahead. Regarding the which things else I have to show you, regarding the drives, the OSD drive, if you remember this file uh, group. Okay, this file has been uh, configured to automatically discover the drives and configure them. Okay, it's due to this instruction, so will, uh, all the drives will be automatically discovered and the blue store will uh, configure those drives. Uh, those drive. And uh, when I will finish, I will uh, give you more explanation about uh, this configuration. Great. So now, as the explanation has been done successfully, I will uh, have I will launch the command for the deployment. And again, this deployment will be a bare metal installation. Okay, if I intend to perform a a I can say if I intend to perform a containerized installation with a safe agent, for instance, I will use the this uh, playbook, this YAML playbook, playbook, this one. So too much talk, 
<laughs> let's go for the deployments. Okay, great. The installation has been done. It's a success. As you can see, let's go on the dashboard to see. But before moving further, let me see here. You can have a sum up of what has been installed. Okay. I will first, I will just go back on the root mode. Here I have a little warning here. Okay, to remove this warning, I have to execute a, a tiny command that you have to remove this warning. This one is about a security concern that has been raised up before, and uh, the developer has given this command to avoid this warning. Okay. So next step, let me just check again, the status is okay. Okay, let's go. Now let's see the, our, our dashboard, how it looks like. To do that is simple. I have to just hit the IP address of your monitor and on the port 044, okay. And, uh, Great. The, the credential, the user of credential is this one, and the access credential. You can have, you can get the access credential here. Okay. You remember in the your file YAML, your old .yaml file is uh, the file within which you have defined the, the IP, the, the password to access to the, de, the to the admin dashboard. Simply. Great. So now I have access to the dashboard. I can view the different hosts. I have six six hosts in, within my cluster. One monitor. We have also one manager right now. One uh, Redis gateway node. One uh, metadata server. Okay, as you can see. Let's review a number of informations. Here I have a a sum up of all nodes that I have in, in my cluster. The physical disk, I don't have information with it because I don't, it is not a, it is not a containerized installation because of that. Okay, here, regarding the monitors, I have one monitor. The services, I don't have a orchestrator service installed because it is not a, a it is a bare, bare metal installation. Okay. Next, uh, here, the OSD. The OSD demon has her, and uh, the Caesar, we have uh, this information that appear here. I have uh, used 30 gig of, uh, for for the storage, 30 gig used, and of uh, free we have 50 gig. Why do you have does we uh, we have this information? Why it show this information? It's just due to the fact that if you remember. In our OSD, let me go back on the node, on the OSD node. Due to the fact, okay, let me, let us be, okay. Great, okay. So the OSD has been configured, all the OSD has been used, okay. I have, uh, here I have all the OSD here that has been used and configured normally. But what uh, if I let me go back on the browser? I have just sort here. Here, for instance, I have one, two, three, four, and five drive. Okay, but if I count here, I have ten drive. In, uh, to, totally, all drives that I have in within this node are ten drives. Okay. But why am I have only five, five OSD here? It's just due to the blue store configuration. 
when you assign the, the auto discovery uh, to true with our osd.yaml file blue store will detect the two types of osd you will have you detect the the nvme drives and uh, the hdd drives it suppose that you, you have the information that the NV, nvme drives are more faster rather than the hdd drives so blue store will store all the let me show you an image so due to that, Blue Store will store will store will store all, okay, all the rock the rock DB uh, database which is the key value uh, uh, database will store all of them on this NVMe drive, okay, and the data information will be stored on the HDD drive just due to that this 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 point. So Blue Store will configure this fastest uh, driver uh, to to be able to receive the the rockdb database okay and uh, the 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 other data the, the object data will be stored on the uh, the much less uh, faster uh, drives simply okay it's due to that so due to this configuration due to this uh, characteristic okay i will have my block the block db the rock DV on this uh, uh, drive, the NVMe drive, and uh, the data, okay, the data will be stored on this uh, HDD drive. Simply, due to that, due to that, I have, I have uh, 30, the, this 30 is just uh, only the NVMe that has been reserved for the rock DB uh, database. Just, just uh, this is the, the, this information. It is because of that I have uh, this uh, behavior. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back uh, to here in the crash map. I have uh, the default default crash map in production. Don't use don't use uh, the default crash map in production. We have to uh, to parameterize or configure the, this crash map uh, according to your geographic or your physical. Uh, installation in your within your data center okay so you have to reconfigure this uh, crash map uh, in production next of the uh, manager modules okay we have some configuration here and uh, let's move on the uh, logs if you want to see have some log overview so on the logs if you have some uh, on or some monitoring teams it's very good to them to have some uh, this uh, logs uh, in front of them Okay, another thing is the pools. I have some pools there. The pools for the RGW that I've been creating during the installations. The pools for the CFFS, the MDS. Okay, and uh, one default pools what's coming when it's coming uh, with the uh, installation. And again, the block. Right now, I don't have an RD uh, Redux block device uh, created yet. So to be due to that, I have this uh, view. For the NFS also, and uh, it is uh, it is not yet configured. And the uh, file system for the file system for the CFS, okay, and uh, MDS. So if you create, I, I have to create another okay CFS so node that we have to. If I want to, I intend to create another CFS component. It will be it will be able to appear here. Great. So the object gateway we have uh, this one. Okay, by default, regarding our configurations, I have only one Redux gateway, so it's up here, here. Okay, and uh, we don't have a, we don't, we have only here, we have only one user, application user for the dashboard, which is up here, which up here, here. For the buckets, no buckets yet, yet created. So we have finished a review of, of our self cluster uh, dashboard. Here we can uh, have uh, an overview about uh, the cluster, the healthy of cluster, the capacity, how much, uh, which sizing can you use, or uh, which uh, row device or, or which uh, row uh, space can you use uh, within this cluster right now, okay? And uh, the, the object, how many objects have been created within, within your cluster, how many pages I have, in my cluster, I can view, view this information here. 
how many pools I have, uh, pools I have, and of the, the average number of PGs that I have in my, in my cluster, the number is zero. Okay. And regarding the performance of the cluster, we can view, view the IOPS value that should be ongoing if any read uh, read and write operation is on, is ongoing within your cluster. Here we have a clean client throughput. Okay. Right now, as I have no throughput or any operation or, or any workloads with my cluster, it is at zero. But uh, depending on the, the workload that you should have, uh, you, you should be able to view the throughput, the ongoing throughput of in your cluster. The recovery throughput also, if you encounter any data uh, issue, any driver issue in your cluster, the data should be rebalanced. Okay. Or, recover through the network, okay? So this information will be uh, appear here regarding uh, as of the recovery throughput. This information will only appear if you lost some driver or if you introduce some driver within your cluster, to your cluster, simply, okay? Because du during this recovery period, it's when you try not to insert or you have any hardware failure in your cluster, okay? The scrubbing is just of uh, the integrity ch checksum within your cluster that uh, should be a occur one or once a month or a, a week depending on the workload that you have within your cluster you can you can uh, com configure this scrubbing parameter it's very interesting if you have a very a large workload or a very very large uh, cluster you should configure this scrubbing uh, parameter very carefully so great so far so good uh, we finished our uh, review so thank you very much uh, and I'll see you for uh, to the next lecture. Bye from now.